Okay, let's unpack this. Imagine, you know, the solar system, we think of it as this uh, predictable place mostly, but then bam, something unexpected happens. A cosmic visitor like literally just pops out from behind the sun, making headlines just yesterday. We're talking about Comet Swan 25b, and there's this huge buzz because, well, nobody saw it coming quite like this. So our mission today in this deep dive is to really get into this surprising comet. How was it found? What makes it so uh, intriguing? And yeah, what does it mean for us, you know, watching the skies? It's fascinating, isn't it? And our sources, articles, some recent research observations, they all point to this. These unexpected guests, they really do challenge our neat little models. They remind us just how dynamic things are out there. It's a, a constant learning process, really. This comet is a perfect example. Totally. And the discovery itself, this part I found really cool. This wasn't just found by like a regular telescope on a mountain somewhere. No, Comet Swan 25b was picked up by a very specific instrument. It's called Swan Solar Wind Anisotropies, and it's on NASA's SOHO spacecraft. Right, the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory. Exactly. And the timing, it just sort of emerged from behind the sun on September 12, 2025. Poof. There it was. Now, what makes this really exciting for you, maybe listening at home with a telescope, is the brightness. It's magnitude 7.5. Which is quite bright for a comet. Yeah. For anyone new to magnitudes, lower numbers mean brighter. So a 7.5, that puts it potentially within reach of, you know, decent backyard telescopes. It's actually something you might be able to see. And the SWAN instrument, well, it's almost tailor-made for finding comets like this. Its big advantage is that it's super sensitive to hydrogen. See, as comets get near the sun, the ice doesn't just melt, its sublimates turn straight to gas. And a lot of that gas is hydrogen. Ah, okay. So Swan sniffs out the hydrogen. Precisely. It picks up these uh, faint hydrogen signatures over a really wide area. This lets it see comets even when they're far off or, like in this case, kind of hidden by the sun's glare from our view here on Earth. It's got this unique way of seeing them that optical telescopes just can't manage when looking sunward. So it's not Swan's first rodeo then? Not at all. It's actually got a pretty good track record. Since 1996, it's found 12 comets. That was noted in an ESA study back in 2020. So connecting this to the bigger picture, it just highlights how we have these um, constant watchdogs up there. Yeah. Instruments doing their main job, but also making these amazing bonus discoveries, yeah. finding things in our blind spots, essentially. That's incredible, finding the hidden stuff. Absolutely. Okay, so Swan spots it, but then... What are we actually seeing? Because I hear this comet isn't just sitting there looking bright. It's described as really active. What does that mean visually? And what about this growing ion tail? Right. So active here means more than just bright. We saw its sudden appearance, sure. But now it's rapidly developing this uh, distinct ion tail. If you were looking through a telescope, you'd see this faint, maybe bluish stream of gas pointing away from the comet's head, always directly away from the sun, pushed by the solar wind. And the fact that it's growing fast. That tells us a lot of material is being ejected from the nucleus, the comet's core. The main theory right now is what's called a post-perihelion outburst. Mm -hmm. Perihelion is its closest point to the sun. So post-perihelion means it's already past the sun and it's heading back out. And now it's having this like violent release of material. Why would it do that after passing the sun? Good question. Could be a couple of things. Maybe the heat stress caused it to fragment a bit, break up. That exposes fresh ice underneath to the sunlight and solar wind. Or maybe it just rotated, exposing a pocket of really volatile ice that was hidden before. Boom, instant activity. And what's great is this isn't just theory. People are seeing it. Michael Matiasso in Australia, he got the first visual confirmation with binoculars. Wow, just with binoculars. That really brings it home. Yeah, imagine looking up and seeing that just appear. Pretty amazing. It really is. So it's not just found, it's actively doing surprising things. And this brings up a point, right? Our sources stress these kinds of outbursts. They really mess with our predictions, right? We have models for how bright comets should get. Does this mean the models are just wrong? Or is it more complex? Huh. Well, it's definitely more complex. It's a great question. It's maybe a bit of both. Our models aren't totally wrong, but comets clearly aren't always uh, well-behaved. We know from research like studies in the Journal of Geophysical Research back in 2019 that comets can have these unpredictable outbursts near the sun. What SWAN 25b is doing, especially being seen so clearly partly thanks to instruments like SWAN, it's not breaking the rules entirely, but it's definitely forcing us to refine those models. Refine them how? By acknowledging how varied comet nuclei can be. They aren't uniform snowballs. They have different pockets of stuff, different structures, and how they react to solar radiation isn't always simple. 
these outbursts give us this amazing direct look into their insides, you know, yeah. what materials are boiling off. It's like a natural experiment playing out right in front of us. We're learning that comets have these uh, complex personalities, you could say, and our predictions need to account for that. Comet personalities. I like that. Okay, so it's giving us lots to study about its past behavior and current outbursts, but what about the future? Where is it heading? I saw some buzz about the preliminary orbit data. Something potentially exciting. Ah, uh, yes. The potential close approach. Exactly. It suggests Swan 25b might come within 0.25 AU of Earth in October 2025. Now, an AU astronomical unit is the Earth-Sun distance, about 93 million miles. So 0.25 AU is, what, like 23 million miles? Roughly, yeah. Still very far in human terms, but cosmically speaking, for a newly found active comet, that's pretty close. Pretty close. Now, we have to stress, this is provisional data, right? Unconfirmed. Comet orbits, especially after outbursts, can be tricky to pin down early on. Absolutely. Needs more observation to lock it down. But still, even the possibility gets people excited. Scientists, amateur astronomers, everyone. These kinds of close passes by new active comets are rare. Great opportunities to study them up close. And this potential approach, even being provisional, it highlights something bigger about how we find things now. Think about SOHO, the spacecraft carrying SWAN. The ESA tracks something like over 300, 900 comets discovered just by SOHO. Wow, that many. Yeah, an incredible number. Far more than any ground-based survey could probably manage alone, especially near the sun. But it also connects to this rise of um, citizen science and automated surveys. Discovery isn't just for the big professional observatories anymore. Well, you have software now that automatically scans huge data sets from sky surveys, flagging potential objects. And alongside that, you have dedicated amateurs, citizen scientists with really good gear. They often provide crucial follow-up observations, confirming objects, tracking them, noting changes in activity, like Matiasso did with his binoculars. Remember Comet Neowise a few years back? Huge collaboration with citizen scientists worldwide. Ah, uh, yeah, I remember that one. Spectacular. Exactly. So it really democratizes the whole process. It means you, listening right now, could potentially contribute. It's a genuinely exciting time for discovery. Everyone could potentially play a part. That is a fantastic point. Discovery as a team effort involving everyone. Okay, so let's recap this whirlwind tour. We started with this comet, SWAN 25b, appearing seemingly out of nowhere from behind the sun, found by the specialized SWAN instrument on SOHO. Then we talked about its surprisingly active behavior, that growing tail, the outburst theories, how it challenges our models but gives us amazing insights. And now, this potential close-ish Earth approach, highlighting how discovery itself is changing with technology and citizen involvement, it's really a reminder of just how dynamic and well, surprising the universe can be. It truly is. And as we keep watching Swan 25B over the next weeks and months, it really makes you wonder, doesn't it? What else is hiding out there? Tucked behind the sun, maybe? Or just waiting in the dark? Waiting for an instrument like Swan or maybe just someone with keen eyes and a bit of luck to spot it? And, you know, how will these unexpected visitors keep changing what we think we know? How will they force us to uh, rewrite these cosmic textbooks again and again? Just constant unfolding stories. So, yeah, keep looking up. Stay curious. Every new discovery like this just adds another layer to our understanding of this incredible universe we're a part of.